Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, I'm Liam, a Cambridge graduate and current London law student. And this is rule two in my Oxford Student Study Hack series, inspired by a book I co-authored with a group of Oxford and Cambridge students. This rule is to sort out your filing system immediately, and it applies to both digital and handwritten note making methods. I actually use a combination of typed and handwritten notes throughout my time at Cambridge, so if that's how you feel most comfortable studying, go for it. This also applies regardless of which note making app you use. I personally use a combination of Microsoft Word and Google Drive, but if you use OneNote or Notion, the same will apply. So we're quickly going to cover why effective note organisation is crucial for the brain. I'll then share my method of note organisation before giving you a quick tip to make exam preparation twice as effective. So why should you bother organising your notes? Wouldn't that time be better spent actually learning information? Well, according to Dr. Wynne Wenger, who's an expert in creativity and learning, the brain receives approximately 10 million bits of information per second, but is only capable of processing 126 bits per second. Thus meaning it can only process around one in every 80,000 bits of information received. This means that conscious thinking is a scarce resource, and thus the brain looks to use the little energy and processing power that it has as efficiently as possible. One of the ways the brain makes itself more efficient is by compartmentalizing information, basically building little patterns so that it can group information into smaller subgroups. Really what you're doing by organizing your notes is facilitating the brain's process of building these patterns, where it compartmentalizes information. Yes, building links between the different topics, but keeping the topics in separate compartments so that it can at any time easily access any one of those compartments. So by effectively organizing your notes, you're basically mimicking the brain structure, allowing it to more easily compartmentalize different pieces of information and also more easily build links between those different topics. So if you're following a paper system, invest in some ring binders and dividers, and you might also like to get some plastic wallets, although I personally don't use them, they aren't great for the environment, and they also make it much more difficult to annotate over the top of your notes when it comes to exam preparation. And then regardless of whether you handwrite or type your notes, I'd recommend that you do the following. First of all, and I'm gonna show you using an example of my notes from law this year, I'd recommend that you have a separate folder for each of the subjects on your syllabus. So you'll see here that I have a folder for taught, I have my schedules for the year, I have land, uh, independent research essay, EU, equity and trusts, English legal system, criminal, contract, conad. Those are all of the core topics that I had to cover over the course of the year. And I then have a few different documents at the bottom that don't fall into any of those categories that were extra pieces of information. For example here, um, a general piece of information and advice on writing legal essays. Then if we go into one of these folders, for example, contract, my next piece of advice is to make sure that, for example, as you'll see here, there is an extension material contract law duress document. Now this folder, in the run-up to your exams only wants to contain piece of information that you're actually going to need to learn for the exam. So any extension material, any extra reading, etc., documents that aren't necessary, I would recommend, and you can see here I've numbered this 00, zero along with my mocks, I would recommend that you basically either throw away or put in a separate folder so that it's out of the main bulk of information that you're gonna make your revision notes from. So with this, I'm simply going to move this to my trash and that basically clears out this folder and you can see now my final piece of advice here in terms of how you organize your notes is to split this folder up into different topics according to what you're going to need in the exam either using if you're using a physical note based system uh, using file dividers or using subfolders and I personally like to use a numbered system so I'll number the documents that I that are from the same topic the same number um, so for example, let's look at 05. 05 is consideration. The study notes for this were in two uh, different documents, 05 and 06. That's why it's called 05 plus 06. Now, when I come to make my notes for the exam on consideration, I know that I have everything I need in this folder, contract, and that everything numbered 05 or 06 is relevant to the topic of consideration. It's actually very easy when you make notes at the time, if you don't save them in the right place, easy to find later on, you might just forget they exist. And those notes might have contained some great ideas. I actually had this happen to me in my first year at university. I had some amazing Spanish notes that I only found in my second year of university because I had stored them in a rubbish place without a numbered filing system like this. 
and I'd missed out on using those ideas in the exam. Having well-organized notes should also increase your confidence as you move towards the exam because you can easily see that you have a really comprehensive set of notes from which to make your condensed revision notes and you'll then quickly be able to get onto the memorization phase of the revision process. And finally, a quick tip that has probably doubled the amount of stuff I'm able to cover during my exam preparation is to spend a day before I begin my exam prep thoroughly organizing my notes. When beginning my exam preparation, I normally spend the first day putting together the spreadsheet that I use to track the topics I'm going to cover and also sifting through any loose files or pieces of paper and putting them into the correct topic section ensuring that everything is in order before I begin properly. The reason I think this is so effective is that it means you don't waste any time, lose focus, or get drawn to procrastination while looking for a piece of paper or a file. Looking for notes takes away from the focus you have on the topic you're covering, meaning that it's much more likely you'll get distracted, going on your laptop, looking for that file, and then ending up on YouTube watching my videos, hopefully. So yeah, spend that day getting everything in order so that your study sessions are spent focused on the material you actually want to study, rather than searching for some file or piece of paper that you know exists, but you just can't find. So in conclusion, it's horrendously corny, but that old adage that my primary school geography teacher went over and over is probably true. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss out on any of the rules being released in the future. Give it a quick like and then head straight on to rule three if it's available. And remember that all of these rules are taken from my book, The Rules of Revision, which is available in ebook form with a 20% discount for my YouTube viewers, link in the description. And there'll also be a link to the hard copy available from Amazon. Thanks a lot and I'll speak again very soon.